and the title of my message is Come out of her, my people. Okay, let's read the key verse together, verse 4. Okay. Please. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share innocence, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. We we'll return to our study of Revelation, now to chapter 18. As we studied, chapters 17 and 18 are not written chronologically after chapter 16, which is about the final last plagues of a seven-ball judgment with the destruction of Babylon and mention of Armageddon battle. Chapters 17 and 18 are interlude that reiterates the destruction of Babylon in detail. Chapter 17 is focused on religious side of Babylon the Great and its destruction. Chapter 18, political and commercial side of this kingdom and its destruction. We can say that chapter 17 is the final form of world religion. We see the final form of world religion in chapter 18, final form of world government. And in chapter 17, you could see the end of the world religious system personified uh, as a great prostitute. He said in verse 4, Babylon the great, the mother of prostitutes, and the abominations of the earth. You could see the end of this world religious system is written, the beast and ten horns, ten of kings, we saw, will hate the prostitute. They will bring her to ruin, leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her with a fire. The ruin is stressed. That means no more religion. No more religion. The only religion is worship the Antichrist. Today, we will study chapters 18, 1 to 8 with the title, Come out of her, my people. In the last, next lesson, next week, we will start the rest of chapter 18. There is complete destruction of economic, political and economic kingdom of Babylon the Great, Satanic kingdom of the world. So let's study today's passage with the title, Come out of her, my people. First, judgment pronounced. Verse 1 says, After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. According to chapter 15, verse 10, at the outpouring of a fifth bowl, which was poured out on the throne of the beast, his kingdom was plunged into darkness. You can imagine that the, the earth has been made dark by the judgment of God. In that darkness comes a bright light. And the world will realize, will look at this bright light, realize that it is an, it is an angel having authority. The splendor illuminates dark earth. In the illumination of the bright light on the earth, the angel shouts with a mighty voice. In that light, Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the Great. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. 
She has become a home for demons and a hunt for every evil spirit, a hunt for every unclean, detestable bird. In chapter 14, God gave a warning message through an angel. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great, who made all the nations drink the melting wine of other trees. The warning became a reality. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great, written two times in Revelation. It has been prophesied in Isaiah, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. All this assure the destruction of Babylon, the great the empire. In Revelation, it actually in Revelation it happened in chapter 16. After the seventh fall judgment, God remembered Babylon the Great and gave her the cup filled with wine of the, the fury of his wrath. And says she has become a home for demons, a hunt for every evil spirit, a hunt for every unclean and detestable bird. Certain birds are considered unclean, according to Mosaic law. Birds, particularly unclean birds, denote evil. In Isaiah chapter 13, it's about Babylon. Desert creatures will lie there. Jackals will fill her houses, and there the owls will dwell. In the parable of Jesus, Jesus parable of a sower of seed, birds came, ate it up, and the evil one. So here we see triple emphasis of Babylon becoming the satanic kingdom, kingdom of demons and every evil spirit. We can conjecture the condition of Babylon. People are under the power of demons, destructive and deceptive, turning away from God. Evil spiritual work is rampant. Then it says, all the, well, all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of other trees. Kings of the earth committed adultery with her, the merchants of the earth grew rich through excessive luxuries. Here, adultery is precisely fornication. First of all, this is a spiritual adultery of fornication. Kings of the world are unbelieving, denying the only true God. They rule and overrule people as if there is no God and there is no fear of God in the hearts, with no fear they were people, and then physical other three follows. And the earth of the earth, the, earth, the merchant of the earth grew rich, and it goes on, become rich through excess luxury, materialism is spread. People become lovers of money, as Paul prophesied about the last days. The whole world is in a materialistic, drunken stopper. The whole world is drunk with riches, lust, luxuries, is uh, merchandising, materialism. All the merchants realize if they want to be successful, they've got to globally market globally market their products. Everybody gets involved. Everybody is prostituted to the satanic antichrist world system. We we'll think more about it in the last lesson. One global economy built on lust for luxury is materialism and destruction. In this part, we should not forget an important message of Revelation. Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the Great. One important message of Revelation. However glamorous it looks like, Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the Great. 
Second, judgment avoided. Now, it says in verse 4, Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of my people, come out of her, my people. So you will not share innocence, so you will not receive any of her prayers. It's a voice from heaven. And it says, My people, so you can think of God. What an appear. Come out of her, my people. It's like the voice of a father or mother who calls the child to come out of deathly flames of fire. Come out. Babylon is on the verge of complete destruction. In the plagues, terrible plagues described in Revelation. Seven seal judgments, seven bowl ju seven trumpet judgments, seven seal judgments are all plagues. And seven bowl judgments are the last plagues, most severe, worst. And just about two, seven bowls, just two yeah, bowl judgment. At the first bowl was poured out. A really painful source broke out on people. And at the first bowl judgment, the sun has give, was given power to scorch people, and the people are scorched, seared with the intense heat. Intense heat. God did not want these people to suffer in that way and be finally plunged into eternal punishment. No. Here, think about God's people. The Israelites were God's people. And they were in the bondage of Pharaoh, in the land of slavery of Egypt. God's constant, me constant message for them is, let my people go so that they may worship me. They are my people. Let my people go. Free them. Constant message. Indeed, God freed them from the Pharaoh, bondage of Pharaoh with his mighty power. Pharaoh yielded. Let them go. Okay. Free them. And when Jesus was conceived in Mary through the Holy Spirit, the message of an angel of the Lord to Joseph was, He will save his people from their sins. His people, save his people from their sins. Then Jesus died on the cross, shedding his blood. For the forgiveness of sins of his people, he rose again. Confirming his atoning death, different from all other deaths of men sinners. This gospel of salvation has been preached to all nations throughout two millennia. God called and raised his servants to save his people in each generation. In Revelation, in even the tribulation time, God raised 144,000 faithful and dedicated from 12 tribes of Israel. And God sent two powerful witnesses. They carried out their mission, testifying to Jesus to the point of being killed. The whole world could see their death. They refused them burial. Then they came to life and people were terrified. Anyway, two powerful witnesses God sent. Even God let an angel flying mid-air proclaim the eternal gospel, saying, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour of judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and springs of water. The second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made the other nations drink the meddling wine of other trees. And so the angel followed. With a loud voice he proclaimed, If anyone worships the beast in his image, and received the his mark on the forehead, on the hand, he will to drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. He will be tormented with the burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. The smoke of the torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and his image, or anyone who receives mark of his name. 
Baki message. Now is at the, just before the complete destruction of Babylon, God appears. Come out of her, my people. Any believers, any who has been saved through, during this time, out of Israel or out of other nations, any of those who still are part of this world system, anybody who is associated with this system, come out. That they may not participate in her sins, receive any of her plagues, come out. By the way, this uh, same calling, the prophet of old said the same thing to the people living in Babylon before the judgment. Isaiah chapter 48 is about Babylon. Leave Babylon, flee from the Babylonians. Jeremiah chapter 3 is also about Babylon, destruction of Babylon. Flee out of Babylon, leave the land of Babylonians. And again, flee from Babylon, run for your lives. And come out of her, my people, run for your lives. This look historically at the destruction of the Babylon, also prophetically, the end, look at the end as well. Here, says, come out of my people, come out of her, my people. So you will not show innocence. So you will not receive any of her plagues. Continues. For her sins are piled up to heaven. God has remembered her crimes. Here, piled up means glued together, wealth together, her crimes collected together, and they were piled together up to heaven. The Bible Tower did not reach heaven. God stopped it. But her sins are piled up to heaven. And God has remembered the crimes. What does that mean? God remembers no more for the sin of those who repented. When God remembers the sins, then his severe punishment follows. God's people should not be seduced by the world. They should not be seduced by sin in any and every generation, especially in the last age. Wherever there is a Idolatry, prostitution, pride, complacency, rely on wealth, indulgence, indulgence and pleasure, violence, there is a Babylon. God will judge it. God wants his people to avoid their judgment. Come out for my people. I think more about the meaning of this to us. What does that mean to us? We should know in what time we are living and where the world is going. I hope to hear the briefing of Albert Molo, president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, that helps us to have a Christian view of the world through events. Last uh, Tuesday, I heard the briefing. Two articles shocked me. And the one article titled, U.S. House of Representatives Adopts Rule Banning Gender Specific Language. Open to Albert Moro. What is found in House Resolution is this. In Clause 8, C3 of Rule 23, strike father, mother, son, daughter, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, nephew, niece, husband, wife, father-in-law, mother-in-law, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, stepfather, stepmother, stepson, stepdaughter, stepbrother, stepsister, half-brother, half-sister, grandson, or granddaughter. Strike. Insult. Parent, child, sibling, parent, sibling, sibling's child, spouse, parent, you know, child, you know, sibling, you know, step parent, step child, step sibling, half sibling, or grandchild. Now it's the rule of United States House of Representatives. 
several years ago, same-sex marriage was legalized. Now, it becomes the rule of House of U.S. House of Representatives. Then what will happen more and more? Maybe there will be a day. There's no such order father or mother, son or daughter, boy or girl, in the children's textbook. Then there's no concept of father or mother, brother, sister. If those words are taken out from the Bible, maybe they can be ruled. How is this the concept of father and mother, husband and wife, to know, to let them know God's heart? And bride and bridegroom and wife of Christ, the church, no Christ love. I wonder why they did not write, uh, they did not strike bride and bridegroom. If they could not find the possible words, they combined together anyway. Unthinkable. Another shocking article is this. New England Journal of Medicine, one of the most open people, one of the most respected journal, medical journal in all of medical all of medicine, dropped an article entitled Failed Assignments, Rethinking Sex Designations on Birth Certificates. Three doctors conspired to write the article. The argument is that on the birth certificate, the birth certificate is no longer in the information that will be publicly available indicate whether or not male or female, boy or girl. What's going on? They are most intellectual people, most powerful people, but these are what they think they write and speak. Wow. The intellectually minded, most intellectually minded people, their mind goes where? Go in that way. Truly, man does implement his death, is against God and God's Christian truth. Truly, the whole world is going astray by a deceiver of the entire world, as we studied in Revelation. The whole world is going astray. The world seems to be going farther and farther to the left. God's creation truth is that He created men, people. He created male and female. Jesus confirmed it, the creation truth. As for Christians, God's creation, Christ's death and resurrection, His coming again, is the truth. Never can be changed. Undeniable. <clears throat> Surely, the battle is going on between God and Satan. And this battle is between the truth and the lie. It is so, it has been so. From the Garden of Eden, all ages, and in the last time, it will be most severe when the end of the world is coming closer. We should know where we are living, where the world is going. Before you're going too far, perhaps Jesus will come again, but we may know. Come out of all my people. Surely it does not mean that we still leave this world. To some, there will be time to live physically. As Jesus said, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the roof of his house go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. Maybe there will be a time. However, even though we do not live right now, we need such attitude with a spirit of urgency, sense of urgency. And Jesus' prayer, remember, as a high priest, he prayed, My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but protect them from the evil one. They are not of this world as I am not of the world. Yes, we should not get out of this world, but we should know that we are not of the world. Even though we should stay in this world, where we stand, where we sit, is very important. 
So, some is this. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. Where you stand, where you sit, be careful. You should not sink into Babylonian culture. <clears throat> the how we to live more actively and positively. How? You should remember that Christ gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present age. To rescue us from the present age, he gave himself. God rescued us from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of his son, kingdom of the son he loves. Remember, he rescued us from where? Present age and kingdom of darkness. And so Paul said, Do not conform to the pain of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. It's good, perfect, mm -hmm. and pleasing way. Do not conform to the pain of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. What comes to my mind? Watch out. The words of God for our minds. And he also said in Ephesians, Be careful how you live, not unwise but wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And Paul himself said, when he sensed his last day, he confessed, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I kept the faith. God wants us to keep our faith to the end, however the world changes. It may be our confession. I've kept the faith. Amen. Third, now, judgment defined. Now, verse 6 says, Give her back as she, gave, as she has given. Pay her back. Double for what she has done. Mix her a double portion from her own cup. In the Bible, double means full and complete. So there is no, for example, in Isaiah, yes, she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins, full and complete. And Jeremiah also, I will repay them double for their wickedness. There is no compromise for God's judgment. God's judgment is a Full and complete. It is chief emphasis of his judgment. Give up back to her. <clears throat> she has given. Pay back double for what she has done. Fix a double portion from her own cup. Full, complete judgment. And he says further, Give her as much torture and grief as the glory and luxury she gave Herself. In other translation, to the extent that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, to the same extent give her. For self-glory, self-gratification, give what they deserve. <clears throat> to the extent of a sin of self-glory and self-gratification, give her torture and grief. God is God of vengeance. And he says further, in her heart she boasts, I will sit as queen, I'm not a widow, I will never mourn. Besides self-glorification and self-gratification is self-sufficiency, overestimation of a power. And it is directly taken out of Isaiah chapter 47, God says to Babylon, you said, I will continue forever. The eternal king, you said, and saying to yourself, I am, and there is none beside me, I will never be a widow. So self-sufficiency, self-exaltation is characterized by pride of saying, I am invisible. But God hates pride, he does not tolerate. Then, therefore, in one day, a plague will overtake her. Death Morning and famine. It shall be consumed by fire. It's one day. It's not progressive. 
destruction is instant. It does not limit to a 24-hour day, but it is, you know, one great moment of ecological history in one last explosion, rapid fire will fall upon it. In Daniel chapter 5, says the destruction of Babylon of old was instant. One day, Babylon was destroyed. You know, the king and his subjects, they're having a drinking party with a golden cup taken from the temple of the Lord, enjoying drinking party, consecrating. Consecrate cups they used. Them. Then hand appeared suddenly and walked. Many, many tassel person. In Daniel interpreted, people are horrified, then you interpreted. Many goddess numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. And the cat, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. And Paris person, singular person, your kingdom is divided and given to the mass and Persons. Then at the end of chapter 5, written on the very night, Babylon, Belshazzar, king of the Babylons, was slain, and Darius led it to cover the kingdom. Such a way, in such a way, sudden destruction will come upon the Babylon the Great. And it says, For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. The system of Antichrist may be strong, but the Lord is stronger. No matter how powerful the Antichrist is, how well conceived and defended his world system is, how, force, how the forces of hell and earth and demon and man have armed themselves, they are no match for the power of God, how strong, mighty, he will judge In this passage, Remember, God's message, fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. Come out of her, my people. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, in this study, you can see God's judgment is pronounced. God, his people to be avoided. Judgment. And judgment defined. Clear message. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. How glamorous it looks. Fallen is the kingdom of Babylon. The plagues are terrible. Sins are reaching to heaven. So God appears to his people. Come out of all my people. Dear Father, thank you so much for making us your people through your Son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood and died on the cross, who gave up himself to rescue us from our sins, from this present age, from the kingdom of darkness, he bring us to the kingdom of his Son. Father, really help us to see in what time you are living, where the world is going, Clearly see and come out of her as God's people and live as people of God. Help us to mm -hmm. not to conform to the pattern of this world, but renew it in our mind. Clearly see what God's will is. It's good, pleasing, and perfect will to serve you. Lord, strengthen us and encourage us by the words of God, by your Spirit. Thank you for yours. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.